Welcome, my name's Dr. Jason W. Morrison and I'm a theologist from New South Wales, Australia. Psychologists help people with themselves and other people and theologists help people with themselves and God. We said this is a confession in the last talk. I say then, walk in the Spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. What's walking in the Spirit? Being content with the finished work of Christ as your solution to all problems with God for time and eternity. And you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. What is the lust of the flesh? Thinking you need to do or not do something that will make God happy or stop him from being sad. Verse 17. For the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. Now the flesh is no battle for the spirit, but if you're voluntarily putting yourself into a position where you think you need to do or not do something to make God happy, or stopping from being sad, there's not much the Spirit can really do to help you stop doing that, except assist you in receiving in full totality that what Jesus has done is enough. And that's really difficult, you know, to totally believe that everything's all right between you and God for time and eternity because of the finished work of Christ. See, most Christians go to church for years and years trying to figure that out. There's always this doubt in the back of their mind. There's always the flesh lusting against the spirit, making you think there's something you need to do or not do to make God happy or stop him from being sad. And so these things are contrary to one another, verse 17, so that you do not do the things you wish. And what are the things you want to... What are the things that you wish? Again, they could be outside activities. They could be serving in the church. Oh, look, whatever you choose to do in life, do. Please do. Now, um, we're getting into some serious stuff here now. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. So, if you're truly led by the Spirit, how do you measure if you're led by the Spirit? This is something that a lot of people have trouble with. How do you actually measure how you're led by the Spirit? Well... How many things do you think you need to do or not do to make God happy or stop him from being sad? Because that's deducting away from you your freedom in the Spirit, to be led by the Spirit, because you're leading yourself astray by thinking there's things you need to do or not do to make God happy or stop him from being sad. It's a scratch record, isn't it? But here comes, here comes now the problem with thinking you need to do something or not do something to make God happy or stop him from being sad. Here's the problem with it. Verse 19. Now the works of the flesh are evident. And in this passage, it's something you think you're going to do for no reason. But I've got to make this clear. There is community and social behavior in this category that people are in jail for or have caused harm with and stuff. But this is religiously empowered. This list of things is religiously empowered by the things that we think we not, should do and not do to make God happy or stop him from being sad. This is why good intended religious people end up in this situation. And I'm going to read this now. Because as soon, this is the fruit of thinking that you, there is something you need to do or not do to make God happy or stop him from being sad. This is where it's going to lead. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, as I have told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Now, these are religiously empowered, unhealthy, evil behaviors. And if you persist, right, persist in thinking that you, there is something you need to do or not do to make God happy or stop him from being sad, and you can't find your way out of these behaviours, I'm actually giving you the answer. That's why I'm a theologist. 
There is nothing you can do or not do to make God happy or stop him from being sad. And when you realize that, if you have any of these tr troubles over you, they will let go, because you'll let go. And I'm going to finish this talk on that controversial note. Thank you for listening. Yeah, Dr. Jason Morrison, Theologist again. I just want to say thank you for watching the videos and I uh, hope you got plenty of uh, self-rediscovery and freedom out of it. Watch it on YouTube. Please share or like. Um, maybe even comment. Watch it on Facebook. Like, comment, share. Um, but most of all, get out and live. This isn't a rehearsal. You've got a one-off life. Don't let your loyalty and your faithfulness blind you to the life that you should be experiencing. Till the next video, thank you for watching and bye for now.